Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to learn about why 3D printing matters. You turn on the news, you look on the internet, you read a newspaper, you see people talking about 3D printing all of the time. Why does this really matter and will it impact your life? Here at the Dr. Vax channel, we teach people about how to create things. The Dr. Vax channel is located on YouTube and the best way to make sure you learn about as much as possible about making things, no matter if you're young, old, working or retired, is to subscribe to the channel. So let's talk about 3D printing. To begin with, let me explain how it basically works. Traditionally, when you manufacture something, you start with an existing piece of material and you carve a shape out of it, much as a sculpture does. Computer numeric control processes are used to carve in metal, in wood, in glass, in other materials. Alternatively, you make a mold and you pour a very hot melted material, metal, plastic or glass into that mold, and you mold that material. 3D printing is completely different. 3D printing is just like building a house layer by layer, brick by brick. Have you used a hot glue gun before? If you have, you've used something that in some ways is a human controlled 3D printer. You have some plastic here, goes into the glue gun, and then when you press the trigger, you take and you melt it and draw a line of plastic on your material. If I wait until that line is solid, has hardened, and I draw another line on top, I'm doing what a 3D printer does. So a 3D printer is like a hot glue gun controlled by a computer. To make this even clearer, let's watch a very short video of a 3D printer in action. In this video, we are 3D printing a vase. The vase looks very much like this vase. This is a finished vase printed with this exact process. The brass component is the nozzle. Filament is flowing into the nozzle and then it's melting and being deposited a layer at a time onto the print. The filament is supplied in rolls. It looks like this. So an FDN or a fused deposition modeling 3D printer, an FDM printer, takes filament like this, it melts it, and it lays it down in layers on a print in order to print an object, whether it's a vase, or it's a child's toy, or perhaps it's a nameplate or a luggage tag. It doesn't matter. So the question is, is 3D printing brand new? And the answer is no. It's more than 30 years old. A company by the name of Stratasys had a patent on FDM 3D printers. That patent expired at the beginning of 2009. So that's when 3D printing became more broadly available to everyone. Before that, 3D printers were tens of thousands of dollars or more and used only in large manufacturing operations, very often to produce prototypes or models for something that was then produced in another material. In October of 2009, a company by the name of MakerBot introduced really the first consumer or hobbyist 3D printer. They're still on, in business today. Ironically, they're now owned by Stratasys and they've sold over 100,000 3D printers. But when they were introduced in 2009, everyone expected 3D printers to become available like toasters. Everyone would have them in their home and they'd use them to print toys, to print their own phone cases, 
That never happened. And in fact, Wired Magazine declared the 3D printing revolution that wasn't. So did Wired get it right or did Wired get it wrong? They got it wrong and here's why. We were just at the beginning of the expiration of another series of patents and new technologies becoming available to allow us to produce 3D printers that were very inexpensive. Home grade 3D printers that sell for under $200. On the left, we have the Monoprice Mini Select, which may be the top selling consumer grade 3D printer. It's an excellent printer, but it has a very small print area and it's relatively slow. That was introduced in early 2016. On the right, we have the Ender 3 that was introduced at the beginning of 2018. And it changed the world of consumer grade or even office-based 3D printers. For under $200, you could buy a printer that could print relatively large prints relatively quickly. And the Ender 3 is a printer that is have easily modified. So an aftermarket was created for the Creality Ender 3 where people made other things took onto it. Since that time, both at the consumer level and in the industrial level, 3D printing has really exploded. Now, this is a picture of some of the things I've printed with either my Ender or my Monoprice 3D printer. But as importantly, you're able to print very practical things at home. This is a picture of a bracket. In this next photo, we see that I repaired a broken toy. The slightly darker colored rudder was printed on a 3D printer. Here are some earrings I produced, I printed for my granddaughter. And in fact, in the world of fashion, you can buy professionally produced 3D printed shoes at many stores today. So 3D printing is beginning to impact both consumers. Not everyone's gonna have them, but if you're the type of person that does a little woodworking at home, or maybe you're seriously into baking bread, or you're into other crafts, a 3D printer should be on your holiday wish list. More importantly though, 3D printing is revolutionizing the world around us. Why? Because people understand that producing things a layer at a time is a very different manufacturing process, makes things that weren't possible, possible. The Wall Street Journal ran an article in October this year about how 3D printing is changing healthcare. Let's look at some of the changes. First, this is a model of a heart that I printed on a $500 3D printer that's sitting, oh, 10 feet from me. Now, why is this important? Let's say you're a surgeon. You have wonderful x-rays and 3D images, and you're about to do surgery. You wanna make sure the valve you've selected is going to fit just right in that patient's heart. Yes, you can measure everything on the screen. Maybe you even have programs to help with that. But isn't it better to be able to hold it in your hand? So you take a medical image, you 3D print that image, and you try out the part you're going to replace. That's a simple example of how 3D printing is revolutionizing surgery. In this next picture, we have a really heartwarming use of 3D printing. A child is missing a limb, accident or from birth. Children grow rapidly. If you make a prosthetic for that child, they outgrow it quickly. They're very, very expensive. Well, we now can 3D print the parts for that prosthetic. And we'll see that 3D printing is heavily impacting dentistry today, whether it's orthodontry or your next crown. It's impacting orthopedics, whether it's a brace or a scaffolding that will implant to help your bones grow together or in the future, bones themselves. And it's going to even allow us to produce cell-based materials in the future, whether that's for drugs or that's for organs. So 3D printing a layer at a time is truly revolutionizing medicine. What else? 
Well, Forbes, in an article of May of this year, stated that 80% of enterprises say 3D printing is enabling them to innovate faster. Why? Because you can produce a model on a 3D printer, even if you're going to produce it with injection molding later in high volume, you can test it out in literally minutes or hours instead of days waiting for a model. What else? Here's a picture of a home from a company called Icon out of Austin, Texas, where the walls were 3D printed. This picture is provided by Icon in their press kit. Here's a close-up of what it looks like with the frame over the top doing the actual printing and the slightly darker colored areas are cement concrete that's still wet. Now let's look at video provided by Icon so you can see how it looks when they're 3D printing a wall. You'll see that the nozzle is extruding a specialized concrete and it is being applied layer by layer. Unfortunately, everything about 3D printing is not always good. New tools can always be used for good or for evil. Here's a headline from the New York Times. 3D printed gun plans must stay off the internet for now, judge rules. Yes, somebody has designed a gun where parts of the gun, the majority of the gun, is 3D printed. And there's still some metal parts, but here's a rendering of what that gun would look like. So as with any other technology, 3D printing can be used for good or evil. In conclusion, why does 3D printing matter? Because it's doing for manufacturing what the internet did for information. It's democratizing it. Anyone can buy a 3D printer for hundreds of dollars and make things at home. Manufacturers can develop prototypes for a fraction of the cost. Physicians can use 3D printed components to save lives. And so any process where volumes are low, hundreds, maybe up to a thousand or so, and where customization is important, is a candidate for 3D printing. If you wanna learn more about 3D printing, hop over to the Dr. Vax channel on YouTube. There are over a hundred videos on the Dr. Ch Vax channel, many of them about 3D printing. On YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel, you can like the channel, and most importantly, share this video with everyone you know who might wanna learn a little bit about 3D printing. Thanks, have a great day, and let's continue to learn things together.